edge documentaries like this because I'm the only MMA YouTuber doing deep dives into the actual genetics of the UFC fighters. Huh? 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 Oh, okay. The only MMA YouTuber covering this topic. Okay, sure. Sure, man. Uh, which is why your video just so happened to come out 11 days after mine. Now, I'm not saying Rigo plagiarized my idea. You can't plagiarize ideas because ideas are simply that. Ideas, and they cannot be copyrighted. And to play devil's advocate for Rigo, he made a video on Gooners in the UFC, and I made a video on Gooners in the UFC, albeit those were six months apart. However, the reason why I'm making this video is because Rigo's video on Dagestani inbreeding is filled with misinformation and bad claims, which is why I'm making this quick response video to correct some of the errors that he made. Genetic studies have revealed a shocking truth about Dagestan. It is the single most inbred region on planet Earth. No, Dagestan is not the single most inbred region in the world. This is factually incorrect. The inbreeding coefficient of Dagestan is, on average, about 0.01. And this rate of inbreeding varies depending upon the particular Dagestani ethnic group that we are talking about. Now, remember that little tidbit right there. It varies depending upon ethnic group. You can easily debunk this claim by Rigo by doing a simple little Google search for the inbreeding coefficient of other countries. Notably, a study showed that, when examining women from the Okara district of Pakistan from the years 2016 to 2017, there was a reported inbreeding coefficient of 0.0356, or over three times that of Dagestan's average. Furthermore, as I cited in my original video on Dagestani inbreeding, Dagestan's levels of inbreeding are comparable to that of Egypt. The actual most inbred regions in the world are places like Pakistan, the UAE, and Saudi Arabia, where the estimate for the inbreeding coefficient ranges from about 0.02 to 0.03 or even higher. Inbreeding levels are similar across all Dagestani ethnic groups, leading to high rates of diseases. Throughout this video, Rigo keeps flashing the image of this book, Genomic Architecture of Schizophrenia Across Diverse Genetic Isolates, on his screen. Now, I use this book as well, and I've read through it. He, Rigo, didn't post a link to it, and in fact, he didn't post a link to a single source in his description. Now, you might say, oh well, isn't he making an ironic comedy video? Well, listen to him say this then. In this cutting edge documentary, we are going to break down these studies and how they relate to UFC fighters from Dagestan, such as Islam Makachev, Umar Nurmagomedov, Magomed Ankalaev, and the eagle himself, Habib. Okay, so this is a documentary. If it's a documentary, make sure to actually cite your sources for your claims like I did. And this isn't just some basic etiquette, but it helps bolster your own claims and gives people room to criticize your research. And the problem with Rigo's video is that he didn't even read this source properly, because here's a quote from this book. From chapter 3, part 5, on page 61, quote, the average coefficient of inbreeding value in a population of relatively young ethnic Kumiks is lower than other populations of indigenous people in Dagestan. Inbreeding coefficient values vary considerably in different ethnic populations and among populations of one ethnicity. The average coefficient of inbreeding is 1.7 to 3.5 times greater in two populations of ethnic Dargans listed in Table 3.10. Inbreeding levels are similar across all Dagestani ethnic groups. And this sort of error is precisely why I'm making this video. The fact that Rigo had a copy of this book and didn't bother to read it before making his video shows how little effort he put in. The average age of onset of schizophrenia is younger for offspring of consanguineous marriages, meaning marriages from people who are blood related, such as Khabib Nurmagomedov and his cousin bride, who, according to his own father, is from the same family, the Nurmagomedovs. Now, I don't want this to sound like a defense of cousin marriage, but if a couple is third cousins or further apart, it really isn't that big of an issue. Sure, it sounds gross, but according to this article from the Genetic Literacy Project, there can be some benefits to this practice. This is because your offspring are more likely to inherit and express traits which are highly adaptive to their environment. I use this possibility to argue for my theory in part 3 of my video that Dagestan's high level of endogamy may have concentrated genes 
that are conducive to success in combat sports in healthy Dagestani offspring. Abdul Manaf said that Habib and his wife are distant cousins. So if they are further apart than third cousins, there should be no problem with this marriage. Dagestan populations are thought to have lived in the Caucasus Mountains for hundreds of generations, resulting in inbreeding and low gene flow, keeping the population size small over time. Rigo, it's not thought to have lived, it's have lived. If you took the time to research Dagestan's history, you would know that. The genetic continuity of Dagestan's populations is evident from the data on Y chromosomes in the region, which indicates settlement in the Bronze Age. The fact that he phrased this part of his script in the way that he did further shows how little effort Rigo has put in. Also, causally linking inbreeding with Dagestan's low population is very stupid, because then how can you explain the population explosion in places like Pakistan, which have demonstrably higher rates of inbreeding? Furthermore, Dagestan's population has been drastically increasing in the past few decades. The reason why Dagestan's population likely has been as low as it has been historically is because of its harsh terrain not being conducive to widespread agriculture. It stands to reason that Abdul Manap's wife was also possibly from the same family as well, or perhaps maybe his father and mother were of the same family, and this can be seen in Khabib Nurmagomedov's low impulse control and his seeming mental retardation. Habib is not mentally retarded. Habib is obviously physically and mentally healthy, showing no signs of recessive traits. Habib is a perfectly intelligent man. He's at the very least trilingual, speaking English, Russian, and his native Avar dialect. Just because someone might have a family history of inbreeding doesn't mean they are going to manifest genetic diseases. Habib Nurmagomedov is well known for crashing out after he fought Conor McGregor, leaping over the cage and attacking Dylan Dennis and several other members in the crowd, causing what could only be called a terrible, violent scandal. This is a clear example of low impulse control that could be attributed to early manifestation of schizophrenia. Plenty of other fighters have crashed out in a manner like Habib. John Jones, Connor, Jorge Masvidal, etc. have all crashed out in the past. Fighters in general seem to have a higher likelihood of crashing out, not just the Dagestanis. Furthermore, saying that this is evidence of Habib manifesting schizophrenia is nonsense. Let's take another quote from Bulayev's book, which you evidently did not read. From page 64, quote, the findings of this study show that the average onset age of schizophrenia in exogamous, intervillage and interethnic marriage descendants is 21.7, and in the inbred marriage descendants is 17.57 years. If Habib actually was going to manifest schizophrenia, he would have developed it even before he joined the UFC. And after making this point about Habib, Rigo goes on to speculate about Islam and Magomed Ankalaev and Umar Nurmagomedov manifesting inbred traits. Not once does Rigo talk about the Dagestani who actually is most likely to be suffering from disorders related to inbreeding, which is Hasbullah. Oh, and uh, Shara Magomedov, who actually crashes out by doing things like assaulting couples for kissing in public. But I digress. He then drags out the video to just over 8 minutes in order to satisfy YouTube's requirements for mid-roll ads. Now, I'm going to go on a bit of a tangent here, but if you take a look at the difference in the comments section's response to Rigo's video versus mine, you can observe a staggering difference in the quality of the discussion. Most of Rigo's comments are either from his diehard fans or from people calling him a racist. There isn't much quality discussion going on there. In contrast, while I did have a few individual commenters spurg out on me, the overall response to my video was quite positive, with my video currently sitting at a 93% like to dislike ratio. Furthermore, there have been comments, a good example being this one from a self-described Chechen viewer, asking about how this topic could apply to Chechnya which is very similar to Dagestan in geography and culture, but has a strict ban on cousin marriage. And I answered this question to the best of my ability. The problem with Rigo is that he doesn't cite his sources, he gets key facts wrong, and as a consequence, he makes anybody who is discussing this subject look bad by association. If you're going to make a video on a sensitive topic like this, you need to be willing and able to back up your claims. However, I didn't expect much more from a certified groomer who encourages teenage boys to engage in sexual acts. If you haven't already, go watch Musical MMA's video on Rigo's depravity, which I have linked in the description. Also, the funniest thing about all of this 
is that this poorly produced video about Dagestani inbreeding is the first video of his this month that has gotten more than 5,000 views, despite Rigo having over 25,000 subscribers. Meanwhile, even though I have fewer than 2,000 subscribers, I regularly surpass Rigo's view counts. Anyways, that's the end of this video. Rigo, if you're watching this, I challenge you to come to Japan and spar me. We're probably in the same weight class, with you being incredibly skinny and me being very short, so it should be a fair fight. But then again, I suspect you might not be allowed to fly at this point, considering your behavior towards uh, teenage boys. Like, share, and subscribe. Goodbye.